But let's get on to, to data now, and uh, everyone's going to have a quick chat, and then we open it up to the floor and we have a discussion. First to the stage, the chairman of Elgin. Please welcome Shane O'Neill. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, I, I've been told I'm the warm-up act. I'm supposed to be very controversial and stir things up. And then I realized that many of you are our customers and our strategic partners. And I thought, I'm not going to be a Gerald Ratner. Um, so let me be reasonably challenging, but within certain limits. And I, I donned my special non-highways suit for this. I wore my establishment um, tweed suit um, just to, to give a, a, a little bit of challenge. I think data is a huge problem, particularly for this industry. And I, I have the disadvantage, maybe in this case, the advantage of only been working in your industry for five years. And previous to that, working in the data and information sector across dev many different industries. And I think data represents a particular challenge in highways. And we, we, we keep hearing about data being the new oil of the digital revolution, get the data to flow and the traffic will flow after it. Um, but actually, this industry finds it very difficult to cope with data. We know that data interoperability is not characteristic. It's not easeful to get data out of supplier systems, whether that's because of legacy, whether it's because of contractual issues, whether it's cultural. But we know data doesn't flow easily out of supplier systems. We know that data flows from the strategic network to the local highway networks. If you read the report of the West Midland Police Commissioner into the aftermath of the M6 crash earlier this year, you'll see that criticism of data flows and information flows between different parts and different highway authorities. Um, we do our best at Elgin to make sure that utilities have enough information to, to, to share so they, they, they coordinate works. There's one street last year was dug up 142 times. Um, we, we don't publish this sort of information. It would make a lovely Daily Mail headline. But we don't know whether greater sharing of forward planning information would have made that much less. We don't really have the information to, to analyze the industry. And I have a cartoon on my wall given to me by a, a Deputy Highways Commissioner for one of the, the Shire counties. And it shows a, a, a sweating and frustrated Romanian HGV driver on the, on the border of a Shire County with his official freight routing map, finding that it didn't join to the official freight routing map of the neighboring Shire. And I don't know whether all the official HGV routes actually map out and link up between the highway authorities, and no one knows because we don't have a national map of freight routing. So information exchange, I think we probably all agree, is less than optimized. And I've been thinking for a number of years, you know, why is this? And I've sort of swallowed the internal industry answer that it's all too difficult. The 200 organization manage our network, and it is a single network. It's 300,000 kilometers of road that are all connected. Um, every journey begins off the strategic network. It ends off the strategic network. You would think this as an industry, by virtue of the physical metaphor of roads, would have interoperability hardwired into our consciousness. But that's not the case. But then I thought that all the other value chains I've worked in are also highly fragmented. And I can book my hotel, book my holiday, order car spare parts. The book trade from which I'm originally from started trading information across hundreds of publishers, hundreds of dis distributors, you know, in 1967. So I think fragmentation of organization is an excuse. It's not a reason why f data does not flow across, across our networks. And then I thought, is it standards? Well, I think actually we're quite blessed in this industry with standards. We have Datix2, and in the streetworks industry, we have Eaton. So there's no absence of standards. And then I thought, is it money? But actually, there's been no absence of money and investment. In fact, the industry is peculiarly for fond of pilots. And there are pilots, whether it's the recent Heineken pro project, whether it's the Stride project, the East of England project, the F-14 project, go back 20 years to the Matisse project in the, East Mid in the West Midlands. Money spent to prove, surprisingly, that, I mean, no kidding, Sherlock, that technology is not an impediment to sharing data and that it, it can be done. And let's face it, we, we all as commercial providers and public sector providers, we will provide our data for a pilot. But what about an ongoing sustainable model for the exchange of data? 
That, that's what's missing in our industry. And if we look outside our industry to other value chains, there are paradigms there that help to make data flow. And in fact, you don't have to, to move too far from our core highways industry. Look at public transport. Look what was achieved there with the pump priming of the creation of travel line to enable information to flow. And now we have real-time schedule information from lots of organizations and free-flowing into, into our applications. The point about data is that data is hungry. It's hungry for vast volumes of information. It needs information in real time, which means we've got to get our heads around the problem that data has to move across boundaries. It has to be permissioned, not necessarily commercially positioned, but actually the information that inform applications come from local highways, they come from the strategic network, they come from logistics companies, they come from the SAP navs. All this information has to be recognized, permissioned, and in real time. And to do that, one needs to set up enabling mechanisms. And to do that, you sort of have to understand it conceptually. And I think the fundamental root is that in the highway sector, not unnaturally, it's a civil engineering mindset. It's a 10 to 25 year purview. It's a focus on physical infrastructure. And IT, and technology is the carrier for data, tends to be delegated to the IT department which is a sort of equivalent to handing the keys of the asylum to, to the inmates, because data is not exactly the same as technology. And IT people also like their big projects, and like, and like their, their big infrastructure investments. Data needs to be separated from IT. It needs to be set free, which is not the same as it being free. Data is expensive to create. It may, be, it, may be, it may be cheap to replicate, but it's actually expensive to create and maintain. Some of that which is funded can be free. If it's not funded, there may be charges. And we have to be able to permission chargeable, non-chargeable information, information that's sensitive and require a head. There needs to be a trading platform for data. And this is a concept familiar in lots of other um, value chains, deeply unfamiliar, and I suspect uncongenial to the civil engineering culture that dominates highways. I think things are changing. I think really privileged to be followed by some speakers where reflects that a strategic approach has been taken to highway data sets. We'll hear from Neil on the new OS master map data set. We'll hear from Nick Carey, whom I hope will mention the national information infrastructure and a more strategic approach been taken by DFT. From, from Tony Malone, how the challenges of the strategic network of becoming more interoperable with, with, uh, with the local highways. But we are moving into a, a new stage where we have to learn what happens in other value chains and actually think data and information as opposed to technology. Thank you.